Hi, I'm Jesse at strobepro.com and today we are going to be answering a customer submitted question. Now we get questions all the time about a variety of topics and every now and then we get one that actually intrigues us and we want to take some time to answer that. And that question is, what is the best light to use in the Strobepro optical snoot? Now that might seem pretty straightforward, well obviously the most powerful one, but we found that different types of flash tubes, whether it's in a strobe or even on something like the AD200 or a speed light, have a really dramatic effect on the output of that optical snoot, even more so than other modifiers. So let's try to answer this question. We're gonna run a whole bunch of tests here. We're gonna try some tests on the AD600 Pro, which has a frosted flash tube versus an AD600BM, which is just clear. Then we're gonna switch over to the AD200 Pro, which comes with two heads, the Fresnel head, head, just like a speed light, and then the bare bulb. And we're also gonna try a speed light just to see what the different effects are on the output of the Stropro Optical Snoop version two. Okay, we are ready to go with our test here. So over here, I have a Sekonic light meter set up right in the middle of our target. And the most important thing for this is that it is parallel with our optical snoot lens. So I've measured the heights of these. This lens is hitting that right in the middle there. And really our settings on our light meter don't really matter because all we really care about is the power output here because that's what we're trying to determine. But if you want to know, this is set to 1125th at ISO 200. So we've set our camera there as well. And we are going to be firing all of the lights at full power because we want to see the maximum difference that each light has. Um, I've focused the gobo on the back wall here, and that should hit right in the center of our little rig here. So all we need to do now is fire this up. I should mention that the distance between, we are gonna measure right from the sensor on the light meter, right to the lens here. So even though the strobe um, sizes are different, we'll make sure that that distance is the exact same every time at 56 inches. So with all that said, we're ready to turn this on and take a few shots. Since we are trying to determine what the best Godox strobe is for the Strobe Pro optical snoot, one of the things I really do like about the AD600 Pro is the fact that it has an LED modeling lamp. And you can see over here on the wall that we are projecting our gobo. So that's really nice to help for focus. If you don't have a modeling lamp on your strobe, you are going to have to focus with multi-mode. Uh, and we can talk a little bit about that later. But this is really nice. It's not going to affect our test at all. So we can go ahead and actually turn that off. Um, but we are focused now, so I am not going to be touching the focus on this lens for the duration of our test. Okay, we are ready to fire off the AD600 Pro at full power here. And let's take our shot. Now we have our Godox AD600BM. This is the one without the frosted. Uh, flash tube on it and we've turned off most of our lights in here. Don't worry that is not going to affect the meter reading. Uh, we just did that so you can actually see the pattern a little bit. The 8600 BM, the modeling lamp, is not near as bright as the 600 Pro uh, but it still gives us enough to line that up. So now we are ready to fire this off. Again it's going to be at full power. I'll go to the camera here and fire this off. Now we have the Godox 8200 Pro into the optical snoot and we have the bare bulb attached. Now this has no modeling lamp at all, so the way that we have to find where we are aiming and focus is using multi-mode. So I've set this to 1 64th power just for testing here, 40 hertz or 40 times at 60 hertz. And you can see when I go over to the pattern here, when I fire this off, it's just giving me a quick glimpse and then I'm going to have to kind of adjust from there 
and you can see why it's a lot nicer to actually have a modeling lamp available to you. So we're pretty close there. I'll just dial it in just a little bit more. And I think we're pretty good there. Now we're ready to fire the 8200 Pro and this has the bare bulb flash head in it. Now we've changed the head on the 8200 Pro. We have the Fresnel head attached now. And I should mention, if you are gonna use the 8200 Pro or a Speedlight, you do need to use it with the Godox S2 bracket to handle the weight of the optical snoot. So one thing I wanna mention here is that we have pulled the 8200 Pro back as far as we can in the actual S2 bracket. And that is to give it a little bit of room to diffuse before it goes out. Because we have that narrower rectangle head, playing around with it, it does affect it if you have it right tight up against the lens on the inside of the optical snoot. Let's fire off the AD200 Pro with the Fresnel head. Last but not least, we have the Godox TT685 version 2 speed light and we have zoomed this into 200 millimeters, which makes a three quarter stop difference in the brightness as opposed to the minimum setting. So I'd recommend zooming in. We're all set up here, let's take our shot. I wanted to give a quick shout out to Don from Pix and Tweets Photography, who originally submitted this information to us that inspired this whole video. So thanks a lot, Don, we really appreciate it. And keep those questions or comments coming because they might inspire our next video. Now, the results are in and they are surprising. Many of you might have expected the 600 to win, but our actual winner was our 8200 Pro with our Fresnel head. And why is that? Well, it really comes down to just the design of the flash tubes. So with a 600 here, we have an omnidirectional flash tube, which just means that this, when it fires, is going to disperse that light in 360 degrees all around the tube. So both 600s are the same that way, as well as the 8200 Pro bare bulb. That makes them very good in soft boxes, octaboxes, modifiers like that, where you want the light to diffuse and come out very evenly. But in a modifier like the Strobe Pro optical snoot, we want all of that light efficiency and power going straight through the middle and out the lens. And that's why this 8200 Pro is so good at that. It uses the Fresnel head and you have zero light loss out the sides. Compared to the 600, it's probably losing about 50% of its power out the side where this is just going straight through and that's why it is our winner. Several users have commented in the past that they felt their higher power lights were underpowered in the optical snoot. Now you might know the reason why, since we took a look at the different flash heads. Now that doesn't make those type of lights obsolete because there's definitely a benefit to using a light like the 8600 Pro with its modeling lamp to help you focus. It's a very versatile light. You also have the benefit of directly mounting all of your uh, modifiers directly to it. Whereas on something like the 8200 Pro, you have to use the S2 bracket. Um, not a huge drawback, but just something to be uh, aware of. So whatever light you choose, whether you already have a couple lights, you might want to experiment with them now in the optical snoot. But either way, you're going to get great results out of the optical snoot. And we really hope that you enjoyed this content. So until next time, I'm Jesse at strobepro.com and enjoy creating.